Make some sound, make some sound, make it happen. This beats louder. This beats quieter. This means all the people with the little red ones get louder. Beautiful. And all the big reds over there. Oh, yes. And the yellows, please. Thank you. Surprise the oranges. Uh-huh. And the greens. And the purples. And everybody. I'm going to sing a signal with my voice. At the end of it, you'll join me on the steady beat, which I'll be playing on my bell. Get ready. Ba 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 ba. Here you go. Look at the person next to you. Say, "Nice job." I'm going to sing that same signal. We'll stop for four beats. Ba 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 ba. Here we go and stop. Two. Here you go again. Nice job. We're going to do that signal one more time. Just practice that four count stop. At the end of that signal, I'd like you to put the boom whacker on the ground, shake hands with the people next to you, say, you are so talented, and we'll move on from there. ba 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 here we go, and stop, shake some hands, tell them what's the truth. All right, all right. Let's start off with a little scenario. Let's imagine that I invite you to come up here on stage and share artwork that you've personally created, a song or a dance or a piece of poetry, maybe some visual art or an instrumental piece. Now, if you're like many people, you may not have a lot of choices to offer up because most of us haven't made art since we were in school. And if you do have something, unless you happen to be a performing artist, the idea of coming up here is probably a little daunting for most of you. How many would agree? Yeah. So the idea is there's a couple of factors at play here. The first is what I think of as the performance paradigm. In our culture, artwork is typically something that's performed or shared in a fairly public and formal venue. Now, this is in marked contrast to many other cultures around the world. For example, let's talk about India. In India, the elder women of the household get up just before dawn. They go out to the entryway to the family compound, and using colored rice flour, they make these beautiful things on the ground called rangoli. Geometric patterns, sacred symbols. The idea is to, to ward off evil. Now, what's interesting about this is that in their culture, they don't take art and separate it out and isolate it. Art is something that happens in the fabric of your daily living to give significance and beauty to your life. The second factor that affects many of us as creative people is that we all have a deep sense of NGE. That's not good enough. See, in our culture, art is typically something that's created and shared by people who've been identified at a young age as having lots of talent, given lots of training to develop their skills, and they've got lots of experience. And the rest of us just don't make art because we've been conditioned to believe that what we would do would not be good enough in comparison. I'm here today to tell you that it's about time that you consider the possibility that the making of art the creating of something that you think is beautiful, that you think is aesthetic, that you think is interesting, that the process itself, regardless of whether the outcome is what you hoped it would be, that in that process there is something magical, satisfying, fulfilling, and it's part of what it could be to be a whole and healthy human being. So the instruments you were just playing, the boomwhackers, those are going to be our laboratory instruments, and we're going to have an experiment in interactive amateur art making. Everyone say, I can do this. Now, three things to bear in mind. The first thing I want you to know is that mistakes are a natural, essential, 100% okay part of making of art. Number two, I'm going to teach you six rhythms. If we had more time, I know that you could all wake up rhythms. We could combine them and hear how they sound. It would be very cool. But I'm going to teach you six different parts. And I'm going to use words and syllables. And I'd like you to say those syllables outside out loud so that it will not only help you remember the rhythm and play it accurately, but when there's five other ones going on at the same time, you can keep yours nailed down. The third thing I want you to remember is that this is about having fun, so everyone go, performance anxiety. Go ahead, throw it away. Go on, performance anxiety. Okay, so where's the big reds? Big reds, are you out there? All right. Big reds up on the charts is your part, and I'm going to do the first half of it, and I'd just like you to echo me. Now, you're all welcome to join in while we're teaching the parts. So here's your part, big reds, once, then twice, then three times.
Did they forget to say the words? Once, then twice, then three times. And Gene and Genesis, I wanted to say Janice, they're going to be your kind of section support people. You'll see from there it goes on with four steady beats, so we'll do the whole thing. Once, then twice, then three times, five, six, seven, go. Say the words. Play it again. One more time. Here's the signal to stop. Here you go and stop. Round of applause. Nice job. Oranges, you're over here somewhere. Yancey's going to be your support person. Now, Oranges, up here, your part is very, very simple. So I'm just going to start it. You're going to join me when you get the idea. Your main role is to keep the rest of us from speeding up. So it sounds like this. Oh, and by the way, once you start, you're going to keep going because I'm going to bring the big reds in so we can hear how they go together. One, swing, and two, swing, and three, swing, and four. Join in, and one, swing, and two. Say the words, swing, and three. Say the words. Keep going. Get ready. I'll bring you in with that signal. They're doing so good. Say the words once, then twice, then three times. Five, six, seven, eight, again. Very nice. Aren't they doing great? Amateur art rules. Keep going. Here's the end. Here you go and stop. A round of applause for our two first groups. Thank you. So was that easy enough? Easy enough? Did you have some fun? Did you successfully make some mistakes? Good job, good job. And did it feel safe to be a part of what was going on? See, that's the beautiful about thing about amateur interactive art. Everyone that's involved is not judging you. They want you to succeed. Everyone's there just to have fun. And there's so many examples of things for us to see and consider doing in the modern world. We look on the Internet. We see all these examples of people doing things, some of which are not all that great. And we think, I could do that. I could be creative. I could be an artist. So I want to give you just a few examples of things that you may already know about that are just examples of possible art adventures you could go on. The first one, how about a little improvisational theater? You learn a couple of simple conceptual frames. You come up with a theme with your friends, and you make up the story as you go. Notice I didn't say anything about audience. The audience is not necessary. It's the creative practice that's part of the fun. How about community gardening? I know that I could get a packet of seeds that would all come out the same color and plant them in a curving line as part of a group composition. Maybe you do want to go down to the open mic some night and share that poem you wrote back in high school or sing a song that you love and be surrounded by people who are encouraging other, each other to express themselves and share what they really love and care about. Whatever the next one is, oh, there it is. Yesterday we had Halloween. You could have invited people over and cooked some food together. That's an art-making project right there. And then you could have had a storytelling circle. And you could have been expressive and dramatic. And the last one, just for now, Christmas is coming up. Go out and do a little Christmas carol. Now, there's many, many new forms evolving all the time. How many people enjoyed Ke Aloha's talk? Part of the slam poetry scene, people get up and read or recite their poems. But there's a whole other element. Sometimes they do a thing called freestyle where the poets get up three or four at a time and they make up a poem on the spot. And at the same moment, someone might be interpreting what's happening with no rehearsal by painting it or moving or playing an instrument. I'm involved in something called Sacred Art Circles, which is kind of an improvisational ritual theater. There's no leaders. There's no followers. We use percussion instruments, singing, dancing, chanting, spoken word pieces, visual art. And we riff together on themes like sustainability, peace, spirituality. You come to one of these things, and it's not like being at home going, I wonder if my art project's going to be good enough and if anybody's going to like it. You just come along and you watch what's happening. And maybe after a while, you start to feel comfortable, and you get up there and you dance around a little bit. The next thing you know, you find yourself singing along because the rest of us can't sing either, right? And then maybe you've got a percussion instrument and you're banging on. This is actually a little pre-training for that. So maybe the next time you come, you come with a poem to offer. You come with a song to sing because you know that our game is we're going to all join you. And maybe next time you've brought a song that you've written or a piece of poetry that you'd like to recite. And it becomes a whole new adventure. Speaking of whole new adventures, let's learn the yellow part. The yellows, where are you? Are you out there somewhere? 
Okay. Ah, it's our section leader. Hi, Amy. So you can see that your part starts with a four count. So we're going to go to the second half. And I'm going to ask you to echo this staccato, which means sharp. So get ready. I'll say the words. It goes once, then twice, once, then twice. Now you. Thanks for saying the words. Once, then twice, once, then twice. Now you. Stop. Let me start with a four count, and I'll do the whole thing, and then we'll do it together. One, two, three, four. Once, then twice, once, then twice. Now, come on. One, two, three, four. Once, then twice, once, then twice. Now you. Keep going. You can say it with them if you want. Three, four. Once, then twice, once, then twice. Now you. Last time. One, two, three, four. Once, then twice, once, then twice. Now stop. Round of applause. Nice job. Purples, where are you? Purples. Hey, Jason, come on up. Oh, and my little guy, buddy. So the purples, we're going to get you started, and once again, you'll just keep going, and I'm going to bring the yellows back in, and we'll hear how they sound together. So the first half's pretty easy. It goes A, B, C, E, F, G. Oh. <laughs> Try again. I'll go first. A, B, C, E, F, G. Say it, please. And then it goes, Mama, yeah, Papa, yeah. Mama, yeah. Papa, yeah. Mama, yeah. Let me do the whole thing through. You'll join me. Remember to keep going. It goes A, B, C, E, F, G. Mama, yeah. Papa, keep going. A, B, C, E, F, G. Mama, yeah. Get ready, yellows. Where are you? A, B, C, E, F, G. Keep going. Four count, please. One, two, three, four. Once, then twice. Once, then twice. Now you. Good. Say the words. Very nice. Last time. Here you go and stop. Round of applause. Thank you, Jason. Let me give you just three more examples of amateur interactive art in action. The first is something called the Beaded Prayer Project. You arrive at an internet site and you're invited to make a little packet or a satchel and put in it something that symbolizes or maybe even write out your hopes and dreams and prayers and wishes for the future. Then take beads and decorate it and let each stitch be a prayer, a blessing, a possibility. Take a picture of it, send it into the website, they add it to their visual gallery. Somebody gets the idea, why don't we invite people to actually send in their packets, and we'll put up a little gallery show. 4,000 people send in their packets, and that show is now touring the United States. I got to do something called the World Beach Project. This one's pretty simple. We have beaches in Hawaii. You go out, you find a beach with some sand and some rocks, and you make art. Have someone take a picture of the area you're making it in. Have someone take a picture of you doing the project itself, and have someone take a picture of the final product. Write up a few sentences, send it into the website. I've got my own gallery page. Now I am an artiste. The last one, maybe you're a social activist and you're looking for a creative, fun, and inspiring way to make a difference. This is Reverend Billy and the Church of Stop Shopping. These are people who are a performance art collective that show up in shopping malls unbooked and unpaid in November and December. They get up, they start singing Christmas carols. A crowd gathers. Christmas carols start to morph into commentary of the excesses of consumerism. <laughs> Reverend Billy bounds out in his Southern White Baptist preacher outfit and goes off this fire and brimstone sermon about the actual consequences in terms of our resources, our economy, our values, our children's attitudes and behaviors. It's all about fun, friends. Fingers up, go like this. Point at somebody next to you and say, you can be creative. <laughs> Who's got the little reds? It's the entire front row. You're going to get to be the first group that stands up, so please stand up. Now, I want to warn you that 20% of you are neurologically disinclined to be able to do this, so if you can't do it, you're just going to end up watching Ka'ala if you haven't got the foot part. <laughs> so step with me. We're going to go step, 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 and your sounds are going to go between the steps. So let me do it a couple times and just watch. It goes step, once, step, and a step, once, step, and a step, once, step, 
and a say the word step and a step once step and a step one now watch him do they look good from behind they look good from the front last time here you go and turn around and have an applause Our last part is the greens, right? Greens, you're going to have my friend Jonathan come up, be your group leader. So once we start greens, we're never coming back after that. We're going to add them all in. We'll see what this sounds like. So your first part goes like this. It says, howdy, I like it. Yes, I do. Six, seven, now say it. Howdy, I like it. Yes, I do. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, I'll add the next part this time. Howdy, I like it, yes I do. Pizza, wee, ice cream. Howdy, I like it, yes I do. Pizza, wee, ice cream. Howdy, keep it going. Keep it going, you're doing great. Get ready, oranges. Here we go, one, swing, and two. Swing and three, swing and four. Say the word, swing one, swing and two, swing and three. Get ready, big reds. Big reds go once, then twice, then three times. Five, six, seven, eight. Say the words, please. Thank you. Yellows, get ready. with four beats. One, two, three, four. Once, then twice, once, then twice. Now you keep it going. Purples, are you ready? Here it comes. A, B, C, come on. A, B, C, E, F, G. Mama, yeah! Papa, yeah! The benefit of amateur art making is powerful and accessible to everyone. It's easy to get started. You can do it from the, from the isolation of your own home through the internet. It's fun. You get to do something different. You get to be creative. You'll make new friends. You develop some new skills. And you might even get to have that 15 minutes of fame. I mean, you never know where this video might end up with. <laughs> so I've run over time, Gene. I'm sorry. I'm going to get off the stage. But I do want to say one last thing. Maybe, just maybe, the meaning of life resides in each one of you in the creative thing that you haven't done yet. Take a risk. Bring it forth. Bring beauty and magic to the world. And if you don't know how to get started, Google Collaborative Art Projects. Thank you.